We spent so much time thinking about roguelike games and playing them and so on. It's like, I, I think it's what's so fundamentally compelling about them. It, it makes them, like, true to life in a way. Like, what's life if not trying to kind of control <laughs> the things that we can't control, right? Hey everybody, welcome back to PlayStation Underground. You got your old pal Justin here, joined by my good pal Tim, and joined by our mutually good pal Greg Kasavin from Supergiant Games. Welcome to the show, Greg. Hey, thanks a lot for having me. Yeah, welcome. So we're really excited here to be talking about Hades, a game uh, that is finally coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 on August 13th. Uh, I'm a big fan of your studio. I'm a big fan of this game, and uh, I'm excited to see this game running on a PlayStation 5. Um, Greg, first of all, just congratulations on the excellent reception to the game, and congratulations on getting it out to uh, PlayStation here uh, in not too long. Um, we're really excited uh, to, to finally have it. Yeah, thanks so much. We are really, really excited as well to be back on PlayStation very soon here. Um, it's It's been a wild ride uh, with Hades for sure. We, uh, uh, I, I was telling you a bit before, we certainly could not have uh, fully anticipated the degree to which, you know, so many folks would be so excited uh, about this game. So yeah, we, we liked nothing better than to allow even more folks out there to be able to play and enjoy it. Yeah, well, I'm excited for them to get their hands on it, too. So what we're seeing here is a run. I think this is uh, somewhere around halfway through, uh, you know, a, a kind of a mid-game run. I mean, not that defining beating the game is kind of <laughs> yeah. a tricky proposition with Hades, but um, you've got a few clears under your belt here. I saw that we did some stuff with the, the mirror at the beginning. That's kind of your permanent upgrades that you can unlock. And, and we started with a Poseidon boon, which is a good start in my book. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Those Poseidon boons are, are great, um, and we're we're rocking the shield, which I think is a great choice. Um, I think my first clear in this game ever was with the shield, so uh, I got a soft spot for that one. Um, Greg, do you have any any favorite weapons when you play the game? Yeah, you know the favorite weapon is so hard for me because we we just kind of wanted them to all uh, be able to be someone's favorite. I, I think I personally have a soft spot uh, for the, for the blade, the starting weapon, but that's oh, yeah. probably a bit of development nostalgia uh, on my part, uh, just because it's the one that he's he's always had. Um, uh, Hades started in early access, so. Um, uh, it, it actually started off, it, it's a weapon that got a lot stronger uh, over the course of development, mm. um, in part because it ends up having some like pretty significant, like kind of built-in disadvantages because it has no ranged uh, component. You know, even with right. the shield here, you can, you can chuck that thing and uh, like deal with enemies from, from far away. But with the, with the blade, you always have to get in their face. Um, yeah. But I, I, I do like that about it. I like that kind of play style myself uh, coming from my whatever fighting game background of wanting yeah. to uh, play kind of more aggressively. Yeah, I, I get that a lot in in all of Super Giants games. Actually, I, I think that um, one thing that the team does really well is your your personal tastes come into come into the game. Like you, they really shine through. Um, you can you can see uh, uh, kind of like you mentioned your taste for fighting games and a lot of the games that you put out. And there was like uh, when Pyre came out, there was kind of an NBA Jam kind of element <laughs> to it. Like you, your inspirations are always pretty clear, um, and and they always shine through really well. Um, and Hades, I think, uh, just is such a, a, a great distillation of what makes so many different types of genres great. Uh, and then your your uh, writing just ties it all together and makes it so compelling to want to go back and play the game over and over and over to see what's going to happen. Um, you guys really perfected that that loop of playing the game, then finding out what's happening in the House of Hades, and then going out on another run and just kind of back and forth and back and forth, and the game never really wanting to let you go. How much iteration did it take to, to kind of perfect that that loop? Yeah, I, I mean, it took... Uh, it took you know the entire length of development of like yeah. over over three years i would say we were uh, quite honestly you know we we're tweaking a lot of those aspects down to the very very end and and focused on them from the very beginning um you, you know one of the big things we wanted to accomplish with this game was um to have to kind of make the the pleasures of roguelike games these games where you die and start over from the beginning each time and make them a bit more like um palatable i guess even to, to a wider range of players because uh, roguelike games are known often for their brutal difficulty and uh, hades is not uh, an easy game i think according to most people but 
we wanted to have um, things there to make it so that you you like wouldn't get frustrated and kind of rage quit out as can sometimes yeah. be the case uh, in the style of game and and the entire like the the premise of the story like the whole story component is partly in service of that right it's just one more reason for you to to hopefully not be super frustrated when you when you lose because you're gonna you're gonna get to meet uh, meet your pals back in the house of hades and find out what's going on and all this all this kind of stuff so we were really focused on uh, trying to like reduce how frustrating uh it would normally be uh, when you die in this game um and yeah that's something we were working on all the way through yeah i think from you know a, a player standpoint i think what what i see is a, a huge success with hades and how how it was more palatable in, in a lot of ways from my perspective is like the amount of choice that that your team is given players is huge from like yeah. you know besides as we went into this room you know there's oftentimes multiple exits and you can choose what kind of you know reward you're looking for at the end of right. the room or when you do get you know a new boon you can choose which one of three and just really compare and contrast and so I think that's really makes it very palatable but I'm just curious how from you know development standpoint you kind of had like threaded that needle between giving players choice but also leaving a lot up to that classic you know roguelike kind of rng yeah the you know the roguelikes i think uh like from a from a cosmic level they're like a battle against randomness um <laughs> between between you and the player like as as a player you you really want the randomness to just you wish you could just go away you you, you want everything to go your way you want you know every uh, kind of best skill and ability to come your way, um, but of course the randomness is what makes roguelike games uh, so so compelling. Um, because it, you know every time you play, it's different. There's different encounters, there's uh, different options, and you end up with like a different uh, so-called character build. Um, you know the, your 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 abilities and all that stuff. So we were really interested in in giving players um, kind of as significant of a degree of choice as we could without um, making it so that there's like a a roteness to uh, without making it so that you're, you're just sort of denied the 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 pleasurable part of the randomness right where yeah. where the unexpected things can happen um and i think that's like you know it, it we spent so much time thinking about roguelike games and playing them and so on it's like i, I think it's what's so fundamentally compelling about them it, it makes them like true to life in a way like what's life if not trying to kind of control <laughs> the things that we can't control right um you know trying to create routine out of chaos and that sort of thing so that that's where roguelikes i think can like really ring true for people um and and so giving giving players choices it it just makes the moment to moment play more interesting and it makes the the randomness feel less frustrating than it might otherwise because you know in many cases it's kind of like a pick your poison situation instead of just like being forced to deal with uh, something that you had no con no sense of control over at all yeah well as tim alluded to you guys thread that needle really really well um that's one, one thing that's interesting about roguelikes is that in many cases it's about the player getting better and that's the progression in the game is like your your skill leveling up yeah. but there are multiple levels of that with hades there's yes you getting more technically proficient with the game and with the different weapons and finding a play style that suits you but then there's things like learning which which boons work best together and which ones suit which types of play style all the way up until when you get to the really advanced stuff learning which boons to pick up to open up the possibility of you getting a specific duo boon yep. or a legendary boon that you're looking for later. Um, the game just like it gets as deep as you want it to. And I think that's the best kind of, of uh, like infinitely replayable game. Uh, so yeah, kudos on just nailing that. Um, so yeah, I don't know if there are any particular uh, uh, boons or bo like boon combinations or duo boons or legendary boons that Greg, you see the community kind of gravitating towards the most, or do you feel like it's kind of more an, an even distribution? Yeah, you, you know, one of the things we looked for um, a lot in early access, because uh, uh, Hades spent a good couple of years in early access getting tons of feedback uh from from our player community across all aspects of the game including uh certainly the balance and things like the boons um we would look for you know what are the boons that everybody's picking or nobody's picking right and stuff like that and sometimes the data would say one thing and and player impressions and our own experiences would would tell a different story and and we're just kind of 
uh, we we want to make sure that the choices presented are interesting and there are s few, if any, kind of no-brainer uh, picks across yeah. the game. Um, though there are, you know, depending on like the the type of weapon or even the type of run that players are going for, certainly they're going to be like targeting um, certain uh, specific boons. Like we have a you know hardcore speedrunning community and stuff like that, and they know exactly what they want, right? Yeah. Um, there's a there's a run I saw, um, a speed run of uh, so called a fresh um, a fresh file speed run, meaning uh, the the player is going to clear the game on the very first run as quickly as possible. Oh, yeah. oh, wow! Um, and that player is targeting a boon called Merciful End, mm -hmm. uh, which is a duo between Ares and Athena um, that that kind of synergizes really well uh, with Athena's uh, dash. Uh, with uh, with her dash boon, which is which is also very powerful and quite yeah, popular. Yeah. Boon. yeah, yeah. I think I saw one... that video that you're referring to. I think I saw a video of you and Amir commentating yeah. over that, right? Ooh. Yeah, that's the one. It's on. Yeah, it's on IGN. Um, yeah. it, it was really impressive for us to see. I think I think the player cleared it in you know only about 20 minutes or something like that. And you're you're very you know the player has very few advantages um, on a, on a fresh file. But we did we did decide, you know. We had to ask ourselves that question, like, should it even be physically possible to clear the game on the first run? We decided <laughs> yes. Like, uh, however unlikely uh, it should be, it should be possible, and the story accounts for it and stuff like that. So it was oh, cool. really cool to see uh, someone not just pull it off, but pull it off extremely quickly. That's another thing that is so incredible about this game is the game, like, it knows things that you've done or things that you haven't done to a, an almost unsettling degree. <laughs> like, like it, how... I don't know. I don't know how to ask the question that I have in my mind right now. But like, how did you uh, 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 come up with all of the different uh, permutations, all of the different ways that the game can track, like all of the different things that you've done? Like, if you have a streak going for a long time, like a win streak going for a long time, and then you lose, like the next time you see, I think it's Hermes, he'll comment yeah. on it, like lots of cool stuff like that how how did you implement all that yeah it would you know so we certainly implemented all that stuff over time um and it and it really flowed from the individual character personalities and from our broader desire to like all of our games have have strived to be reactive in some way and to kind of pay attention to the player um like paying attention to the small stuff a player does i i think when games do that it tends to be like really it just feels good. You, you, you feel noticed and, and seen in a good way. It's like yeah. a, my analogy is like when when somebody, you know, says, hey, nice shoes or nice haircut or something like that. It's like it's a small thing. But when somebody pays attention to some small way in which you, you've changed or something like that and pays it a compliment, feels good. So we try to fill our games with stuff like that. And um, a lot of those ideas uh, flowed from the specific characterizations. So, you know, we have Ares, the god of war. He he likes his violence. He likes his destruction. So he's a guy who's who knows all about your weapons, who knows all about the stuff you're killing, how much of it, uh, how much stuff you're killing, and so on. Uh, but someone like Hermes, you know, he's the god of swiftness and travel. We're like, oh, this guy's the god of speed running. He's going to pay attention to how quickly, you know, how quickly you clear the game. And, you know, he'll even, you can turn on like a gameplay timer to time yourself. He'll talk about uh, things like that um, and stuff as well. So it was just really fun to come up with those ideas that felt uh, specific to the different characters instead of it being this sort of one size fits all thing where, where like, you know, if every character commented on on the speed at which you, you clear the game, it wouldn't feel particularly yeah, interesting, yeah. I think. But but Hermes talking about it like, well, that's that's just one of his <laughs> hobbies. Um, so, yeah, we, we just kind of from playing the game ourselves from watching other people play um th there was kind of no sh shortage of those types of ideas throughout development and we would jam as many of them in uh, as we could and implementing them individually was like fairly an individual thing like that was not particularly hard it's just kind of the sheer volume over time right, that right. added up mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know we saw, obviously you know we're in sort of the second second area now, and and defeated Meg and and moved on. Um, but I'm curious, you know, one thing to your point was that kept the game really fresh, and like it was noticing me is you know every time you would fight Meg, she might be you know back in the yeah. house of Hades, and she'd comment on how the battle went, and that battle would even change. That first boss battle would would change form. So what could you say, Greg, about like the decision behind like you know whether to have players 
you know, do the same boss battles again versus, you know, letting them skip them? And, you know, how what kind of decisions went into that? Yeah, we so Meg was like a really important character from from that standpoint you just mentioned. She was the one who I think in a lot of ways like very concisely e expresses um, a lot of our goals with the game. This the, uh, this idea that you know the bosses are going to remember you, and your your twentieth time fighting a boss in a game is not going to feel the same as your first time fighting a boss. And why shouldn't the game be self aware um, about that? Um, we did want for players to like kind of go through the structure, um, uh, uh, like as as their, Ooh, duo you know, not one. nice. Oh yeah, curse of <laughs> curse of drowning uh, can be a fun one. Um, we wanted players to go through the structure each time because the game is like even even thematically, you know, about this bat uh, battle out of hell from right. the very bottom to the very top. So the structure was going to remain the same, but we wanted there to be a lot of surprises uh, that could happen along the way. And it's kind of ties back to some of the stuff I was saying before that um, there's some there's some stuff that can be predictable about it. The the shape of the run uh, can be um, similar from from one playthrough to the next. But within that, hopefully a lot of different surprises um, can can happen. Um, and we wanted uh, for players to encounter the same bosses um, for, for the most part, at least, uh, in part so we could develop those like relationships and kind of have those mix-ups um, in, in the encounters with them. Uh, it's one of the advantages, I think, that like a, a game like this, ha or it's one of the things that makes this game u unique, I suppose, in, compar in comparison to the standard like kind of single-player adventure where you're blowing through levels, you're you're mowing down bosses. You know, you kill them, they're out of the story, right? Whereas in our game, like, you get to just run into some of these characters over and over. It can yeah. really uh, deepen the the relationships and get to some really you know fun types of interactions that wouldn't make sense in a in a game where you spent uh, less time with. Um, with these types of characters, I'm thinking about like a Theseus, one of the one of the yeah, later characters yeah, right. we encounter. Who, yeah. So um, it, it, there were all kinds of considerations like that. I think as we were working on it. Yeah. On on that note, um, one other thing that I think must have just been so much fun for you specifically, Greg, is the idea of getting to create a story with all of these characters, all of these these um, kind of legendary characters who have their own their own mythologies around them. Um, how much like have you been a, a Greek uh, mythology buff for a long time, or did you have to do a lot of studying as you were putting this together? And just what was it like being able to kind of craft your own story? featuring all of these characters yeah it, it was it was a real um it 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 felt like an honor it felt like something i i went into it with um uh you know th there's aspects of it that are intimidating for sure because greek myth um you know it's it's legendary and it's been adapted in in many fantastic works of media including games right god of war series sure. uh, for example um so we had to ask ourselves, like, what business do we even have uh, <laughs> making a game uh, inspired by Greek myth? But I, I have been in love with Greek myth since I was a little kid, like six or seven years old. like when I got my first book based on Greek myth. I actually have it right here <laughs> near, near me. But I, <laughs> I, uh, I had to do, um, I still had to do a ton of, uh, like, specific research working on the story and the writing of this game. But, like, I, I had, you know, despite thinking I was no slouch when it came to Greek myth, I had never heard of Zagreus the protagonist character prior to working on this yeah. game. Um, some some player, which I don't think is that uncommon, like a lot of players assume that he's a character that we, you, you know, made up. And it's like, nope, he's he's from mythology. And we, we discovered that, you, you know, according to some versions of mythology, Hades had a son. And that idea was so, so compelling to us that we wanted to make a whole game around it and kind of figure out what was the real deal behind this guy and how does he fit into the the myths that are known about hades yeah. um, and for me personally yeah like being able to um kind of bring in some of the heroes of greek these uh, heroes of greek myth a character like achilles for example mm -hmm. and then also some of these lesser known so-called pathonic gods these gods of the underworld like nyx and thanatos um who i couldn't tell you why they're portrayed so infrequently in adaptations of Greek myth because they're they're super fascinating, I think. Um, but yeah, we 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 kind of saw we felt that there was this angle um, that we hadn't seen done that much before of like playing into the part where they're this big 
the Olympians are this big dysfunctional family. They're mm -hmm. just kind of, you, you know, they're they're gods, but in some respects, they're not so different from the rest of us, and that they're they're no strangers to, you know, uh, kind of get, getting frustrated with their family members or whatever, kind of bickering about petty stuff like this kind of <laughs> very human, mundane stuff that we're all used to. Um, and that felt like a that just we wanted to explore that um, through this through this story of uh, Hades and his son. Yeah, I would, I would, you know, from my humble perspective, mission accomplished because not only did that shed light on some lesser known characters, but it made the whole world feel really fresh again of Greek mythology because, mm -hmm. you know, you're introducing folks, uh, you know, characters from Greek myth that, yeah, folks might be less familiar with. Um, I also want to note how, uh, how edge of my seat I've been watching this run because yeah. uh, the player has, has been like really, really uh, threading the needle here. And I saw we <laughs> popped like a death defied here um, at the beginning of this fight, but this has been, this has been really exciting. Yeah, we're we're up against uh, the the old uh, Lernian Bone Hydra, who was who is uh, yeah uh, uh, the the Hydra is the the second biome boss, and when we first launched in early access, this was this was as much game as we had. So this was essentially the final boss in the very first uh, version of the game that we released, and we had to build out um, all the rest. And There's the, a great example of the game kind of evolving as you play it more with this boss specifically. I won't spoil it here, yeah. but after you've after you've faced that boss a few times, just pay attention to what happens. It's it's uh, <laughs> the, Zagreus has a lot of fun in this game, and he he acknowledges frequently the fact that he's doing this over and over and over again. And I love that you guys just really leaned into that. Uh, side yeah, of it. thank you. Yeah, um, it's an example of the kind of thing. It's like, hey, let's if it y you know. The way Zagreus is going to feel about the Lernian Bone Hydra after encountering the Hydra dozens of times, it's going to, he's going to feel different about the Hydra after a while. So just like being able to ask ourselves, you know, how would he feel about the Hydra and have him speak to that um, is a lot of fun. And yeah, it went over. Nice and cool. play, players seem to really enjoy it too. So. I love it. Um, well, we're uh, just entering Elysium here. I think that yeah. we're gonna we're gonna uh, shut things down here shortly. Here, we don't want to spoil kind of the, the the final boss of the game once we get up to that point. But um, yeah, uh, real quick, this is coming to PlayStation Five and PS Four. Greg, can you tell us a little bit about just the PlayStation version of the game? Like, what what's the the resolution we're looking at on PS Five, and you know, yeah. any other features that you're implementing? Yeah, we have uh, Hades running here in 4K on the PS5. It's nice. uh, target 60 FPS on both uh, PS4 and PS5. It's mm -hmm. 1080p on PS4. Um, so yeah, it should should run great. Uh, feel feel great. We, you know, there's a big focus for us on just having the action feel as as tight and responsive as possible. Um, and and it just, uh, you know, I think I think inherently with the DualSense controller on PS5, it's, it's just kind of makes every game feel better i think uh just automatically it's such a great controller um i think you've got a fun thing going on with the uh the light bar like it, it it's the oh, yeah. color of the god that you're talking to right oh, that's great. yeah that's right each god that you talk to the the light bar will kind of uh light light up uh, in accordance with with their uh, particular color choice um and th there are a few bits of uh, dual sense uh, kind of extra extra juice here and there petting cerberus and all that <laughs> cerberus is a is a gigantic dog uh so you know you'll you'll feel the <laughs> the, the the intensity of the petting uh when when you're kind of up in uh, up in cerberus's face but that's that's always a treat between uh between runs um, i'm gonna sink 80, 80 more hours into the game just so i can feel what it, what it's like to pet cerberus <laughs> Um, well, cool. you won't need 80 hours uh, for, for that particular interaction. It'll of be course. 80 hours of just petting service. Yeah, that's <laughs> Let's be clear. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this is uh, Hades. It's coming to PS4 and PS5 on August 13th. Uh, Tim, thanks for helping uh, host this interview. Greg, thanks so much for taking the time. Anything else you want to say to the PlayStation fans out there before we let you go? Uh, we're just really grateful for, for your patience and for your interest in, in Hades. We really, really hope you'll enjoy it when you get a chance to check it out not so long from now. Fantastic. All right, well, thanks again, Greg. And Thank uh, you. yeah, pick up Hades on August 13th. Station.